Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So Gangplank received a rework. It's very interesting in the fact that his Q and W are very similar. However, he got a new skill on his E. It basically drops a little keg on the ground that he can destroy, which will blow up and do damage and destroy all other kegs within the radius. However, if the enemy destroys a cast, then they get money for it and there's no explosion happening. So you have to be careful about where you place the kegs. Another cool new thing that changed was his passive. So every few seconds, Gangplank can attack with his melee attack and that'll do bonus true damage and make him faster. And destroying an E also replenishes that. So if you auto attack, destroy a keg, you can auto attack again to get the passive again. And then as far as ultimate goes, it's interesting in the fact that it can be upgraded now. So for his ultimate, you have three different upgrades that you can do. There's one that will drop a big cannonball in the middle that will explode. There's another one that increases the movement speed of allies within it. And then the last one increases the amount of bullets that will be dropped during it. I believe the best one to go would be the one that drops a mega cannonball in the middle called Death's Daughter, as that should do more damage. Following that, I think you should upgrade Fire at Will, as that will do more damage with ultimate as well. And then the last one is Raise Morale, which makes you faster. And by the time you're actually grouped up all together, that's when you'll need that. Before then, you're kind of just using ultimate around the map to try and get like, kills or help your ally get a kill. So Gangplank have been changed a lot now. He's very different. Like his playstyle is much different than before. Um, I really like the changes to him though. I think the E for example is really cool because I think that Gangplank can now like work most like a wave clear champion for example and it's a very like cool and new different style right gives him and also like the ultimate level ups seems pretty cool and could be very useful so i think gangplank overall will be much better than he was before at least so misfortune got some recent changes on the patch 5.14 notes as far as if they're good or not obviously they're buffs they're trying to make misfortune a more valuable champion they buffed her q I'm not entirely sure how the bounce angle behind it will work, but it does more damage if the Q hits the first unit, so it's worthwhile to do that. And then they made her W very useful in the sense that using it gives her her passive, so I think she'll be a little bit more fluid, and her E isn't useless at level 1 anymore. So I think these are pretty good buffs for her early game and lane phase to make her a little bit stronger. And I could see her being more fun to play just because you can actually like be fast and move around with W now. The changes about us here is... It's really gonna change how Azir is being played at the moment. He's still gonna have a lot of like poke damage and long range damage, but the big change is the change to his E that you no longer can knock up the first enemy champion you hit with it. So the Shurima shuffle is gonna be much harder to pull off, and he's not gonna be as strong in like straight up duels where you just go in. So I think it's going to make him a lot weaker in that sense and make him a lot more balanced now. The changes to Echo is not that big. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to change much about Echo. He's going to be a little bit better with lower mana cost and Q so you can like wave play and stuff easier. But I don't actually think it's going to change anything for mid lane Echo. I don't think mid lane Echo is that strong at the moment. This might just make it a better like champion overall. But I still think Echo is like better in jungle and not very like good in mid lane at the moment. So Echo's changes are very minor in the sense that the Q, it costs less mana to do. So for jungling Echoes, you don't run out of mana as much. And for mid lane Echoes, it's not the biggest deal since you got blue buff anyway, but it is a buff nonetheless. And then as far as E goes, they changed it so that the cooldown is less early game. So you can get off more E's in early game fights and you can travel around the jungle more in the case you're jungling him. So overall, these are like buffs to Echo, and I don't think he'll be like broken or anything, but he's definitely still good with these buffs. So Elise has gotten a lot stronger in this new patch just because her E at level 1 is a lot stronger than it was before. You have an extra 0.6 seconds on your stun at level 1, and that means you can level W second instead of E, because beforehand you used to go Q, E just for that more CC ability, and since the E scaled so well, but now that the E doesn't scale as well anymore, you can max W second, that makes her a lot stronger mid game and in case you're building ability power. And they changed her little spiders in her spider form to do magic damage. So they actually scale with magic pen as well now. So 
they'll be doing a lot more damage and she'll have more burst damage. So they made her AP at least a lot stronger than it was previously. Okay, so Evelyn is interesting in this patch just because they gave her a nerf and a buff at the same time. So they nerfed her damage late game. So her first Q will still be the same damage, but as you level it, it gets weaker and weaker. So her early game damage isn't as much anymore, and obviously her late game damage will be less as well. However, to try and make up for that, they gave her ultimate a bigger slow on it. So they gave a 10% increase on that. However, I don't think that's enough since a lot of Evelyn's power is in her damage. Like her Q makes her like, she does a lot of damage through her Q and her ultimate was basically good enough CC anyway. So I think the damage nerf on Q outweighs the slow buff on R. So I feel like she's gotten nerfed this patch. With the rise changes, I think Riot is just toning down rise of all because he's a bit too strong at the moment. I haven't actually played rise myself much because I figured he'd get nerfed soon and yeah like he's just getting nerfed I still think he's gonna be a viable pick but he's not gonna be like broken from the beginning so hopefully this will make him more of like a weaker early on champion but like still strong late game I, I think that's what's happening to him. 이번 5.14 패치 노트에서 탐켄치가 버프되고 서포트 아이템인 지크의 전령이 리워크 되었습니다. 탐켄치는 Q와 궁극기가 버프되었는데요. Q와 궁극기 패시브의 데미지와 궁극기 쿨타임의 대폭 줄어들었는데 탐켄치의 초반 약점과 후반 유틸리티의 단점을 메워줄 것 같지는 않아 게임에 큰 영향을 끼칠 것 같지는 않습니다. So on patch 5.14, they've changed Rune Glaive so that it doesn't turn your auto like your physical damage into magic damage anymore. So for example, Ezo's Q would no longer do magic damage. So AP Ezo mid will be a thing of the past. However, they made it so that it does extra damage to the first monster hit with it. So that doesn't affect lane minions since they don't count as monsters, but for jungle camps, it does. So they buffed the jungling aspect of Rune Glaive and nerfed the laning aspect of Rune Glaive. So there will be less Rune Glaives in lane and more Rune Glaives in the jungle since it should help you clear by a lot. So they've made a big change in the Zeke's world item. They've actually removed it and renamed it to Zeke's Harbinger. So now instead, it gives you mana, armor, AP, and CDR. Generally speaking, this would be an item for support champions. However, it still has good stats in a case like a jungler wanted it. So it'd be kind of weird, but imagine like a jungler grabbing it and like binding to their like top laner dive buddy, like a Maokai and like a Gragas. You guys are just like always next to each other and just getting like a lot stronger. So it's, it's mostly a support item to buff the AD carry, but I could see scenarios where a jungler might get it to try and see like if it's viable or not. However, it seems like it's a pretty strong item since in a team fight, the support will generally speaking be next to the AD carry. And once you reach those 100 stacks, you get this buff for eight seconds where it increases damage or it gives you a critical strike chance for 50% and AP by 20. So it's like a really weird item in the sense that the support wants to build it, but it doesn't necessarily want to bind to the AD carry because it gives you AP. But at the same time, you don't want to bind to AP champion because it gives you crit. So it's a very weird item where I think it'll be only good in niche scenarios, but it's definitely a cool change just because it's giving Riot the ability to make more interesting items that have actives. And I think it's like a gateway to do different things with more items. So I think this is the start of like a lot more items to come that are different. 지크의 전령이 지크의 선지자로 이름을 바꾸고 전혀 새로운 아이템으로 바뀌었습니다. 기본적으로 자신과 아군을 연결시키고 공격이나 스킬을 사용할 때마다 스택이 쌓이고 스택이 전부 쌓이면 스택을 소모하며 특별한 능력을 얻는 아이템인데요. 우선 아이템의 가격이 굉장히 싸고 하위 아이템들이 모두 쓸모 있는 아이템이에요. 특별 능력인 아군 주문력의 20%, 치명타 확률의 50% 증가는 굉장히 크기 때문에 앞으로 인기 있는 아이템이 될것 같습니다. 다만 아이템 스탯에 만화 주문력이 들어 있고 방어 스탯이 애매하게 달려 있어서 모든 서포터에게 효율적인 아이템이 될것 같지는 않지만 능력치가 워낙 좋기 때문에 모든 서포터들이 필수적으로 가는 아이템이 될것 같습니다. 심지어 만화를 사용하지 않는 서포터도요. And that's it for this pro patch breakdown. Thanks for watching and for more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lowclass.com.